Okay, so here we are. In our bundle of conversion we have going from the original style V-belt drives over to the CVF Racing Raptor system. Uh, first thing, basics of course. Uh, I'm just going to pull the front accessory drive off and kind of go through there. Grab my gloves and start the process. One thing I will say for you guys that are running a V-belt system and you want to just update your air conditioning if you're going to 134A like most everybody else has done these days. Um, I will say that the vintage air AC bracket that they sell for the 350 in Cleveland is great aside from the coating they use on the brackets. I'd highly suggest if you buy one for a V-belt system to get rid of the original York uh, giant compressor. Buy the bracket and then take and have somebody locally powder coat the thing so it's actually got a halfway decent finish on it. Um, not a fan of the coating that comes on the vintage air bracket, but over, overall the Cleveland vintage air bracket works great for uh, V-belt applications. I used it for a couple of years until I went to my CVF Racing V system. Uh, but for you V-belt guys that are still content with running a V-belt system, the vintage air bracket looks great and it blends great with stock belt systems. It doesn't look out of place uh, if you're trying to maintain something of a normal restoration. But anyways, um, the other thing on the vintage air system is, is it's really nice for doing the belt tweaking on this because all you got to do is put a, I think it's 7 inch or 15 16 wrench right here and you can literally take, let's see if this is 7 eighths. nope, not 7 eighths. 15 16 somewhere in here. Inch and eighth. It's an inch. Yeah. One inch. Yep. But basically really nice easy way to adjust the belt on this thing. But just going in. Pull the belt drive off. This is just something I had sitting here just for mock-up purposes. Um, Granted, it's a little easier because I'm cheating because the engine is out of the car, but if you're doing a fresh build, it's a pretty easy way to throw an engine in the car uh, with it fully dressed, ready to go. Let's see. big thing about this system from what I've read up on the Raptor system once you get the actual original system off of the car I've been told your typical install times if you're proficient and not sitting there at beer 30 trying to put this belt drive on you're looking at something like uh, to get the system in place in a car, three hours, four hours maybe.
fun part is just taking all this crap off the front of the engine to just to get what you want done. Another fun little note uh, for you Cleveland guys, the Cobra Jet Pacific engines, 72, 73, 74, uh, a couple of little minor differences is just for you V-Belt guys, 73, 74 Cobra Jet Cleveland's had a larger OD power steering pulley, uh, deeper groove for higher RPMs. Your water pump pulley also is going to be a case where the larger, it's a larger OD with a deeper groove than a standard uh, water pump pulley for your typical two barrel Cleveland's uh, or even the same thing it would be on like say a 351 Windsor. Um, once again, just because the Cleveland was spending higher RPMs typically than the Windsor back in the day, uh, you're going to have just a, basically a factory underdrive pulley just to help with the... Uh, Hopefully not throwing belts. But the only problem I ever had on this system uh, with the V belts was the whole reason I went to the Raptor system, or the not the Raptor, but originally to the B system was didn't realize it, but my factory alternator brackets actually had fatigue cracks. And I could never get my belts tightened. They were always slipping, always making noise. Um, pretty brutal, actually. Really annoying as hell um, when you get on it and get to about 3,500 or 4,000 RPM. Um, just even driving on the street, and it would just start slipping. Thanks. This is another fun little thing that I ran into is right here, if you could see, the standard hardware that comes with 
the vintage air bracket for mounting the sand and compressors is not long enough. Um, I had issues with belt deflection um, with both my uh, vintage air bracket and then also with my CVF racing bracket because of the hardware that I used originally and I ended up having to go to uh, SAE standard I believe these were 3 8 or the 13 millimeter I can't remember which but these are grade 8 flanged bolts and I went with flanged nuts to square everything up to keep everything true um, I had problems originally using the socket head cap screws the cap bolts that come with the kit ended up just chucking them and going to an ace hardware and picking up these uh, this is just a spacer here for the kit but uh, it comes with the bracket biggest thing I have about doing a kit like this is, is there's a lot of guys, younger guys, or hell, just anybody in general, that may want to update their car, put more modern air conditioning on it, uh, retro mod, whatever, call it whatever you want, but uh, resto modding, but doing something basic like just updating the compressor, I can tell you that from my experience, having mid 70s Ford product, early 70s Ford product, putting a lot of miles on them, just swapping over to these sand, these sand and compressors is such a huge improvement in drivability. You don't ever feel on these. I switched over to a cycling compressor setup and get rid of the original POA kits. And the amount of horsepower that those compressors draw versus the original York style, it's unreal. You barely even feel them kick in when you're going down the road. Realistically, in the car, once you get the cooling fan off, then you'd be bending over a car and whatnot, but you can get your belt drive yanked out, start messing with it on a Friday night or on a Saturday. You can get this thing swapped out, get the V-belt pulled off. Eh. You know, for somebody that's not a hardcore wrench, or somebody like me that just does it every once in a while. Yeah, you get it done. Get it swapped out, and you'd be up and running, you know, in pretty much a weekend. Uh, sand's getting the actual AC hoses and stuff fabricated. But if you're not running AC... To swap over one of these belt drives, you start nice and early on a Saturday morning or even a Friday night. You know, most guys, most people working on wrenching, they have back it up and running by hell. You'd be back up and running by, uh, you know, Sunday afternoon. I can't remember what these are. Ah, yes, 
Okay, and then starting with everything else, go over a few things and I will be back shortly. 